What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your early Tuesday afternoon so far. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm bringing you a couple of other players that I've been scouting and looking at in potential Giants-related news and players that they could be looking to acquire when we get to the 2023 NFL Draft. But first, a couple of other little nuggets before I start out with the draft subjects about the two players I'm going to be talking about. First off, a couple of Giants news. Obviously, today is NFL Franchise Tag Tag Day. The official beginning of the NFL Franchise Tag starts right now, and it will be going for at least a two-week period until we get to about March 7th. And then that is when the franchise tag deadline will occur. And obviously this has a lot of notable news because within the next two weeks, the Giants have to try and see if they can work out a long-term deal with both Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. As right now, the team is not interested in tagging either one of those players with the franchise tag unless they have no choice but to do so. Obviously, the franchise tag for the quarterback is $32.4 million, and for the running back, it's $10.2 million. So obviously, if you can get a deal done with Daniel Jones, that's of utter importance. So we'll have to wait and see if the Giants can get a long-term deal done with both Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Jones is looking for around 40 to $45 million right now per season, and Saquon Barkley is looking for around $16 million per season. Both of them heading into their free agent years this year after the Giants declined the fifth-year option on Daniel Jones' contract before the season in 2022. And Saquon Barkley played out his fifth-year option with the New York Giants this past season in 2022 as well. So we'll have to wait and see how that progresses through the time period. But it's very interesting that Franchise Tag Day officially begins today and the New York Giants have two weeks to try to work out a long-term deal with both Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. And right now, General General Manager Joe Shane is reluctant to give the franchise tag to either one of those guys unless it's deemed necessary if they cannot work out long-term deals with both players by the time we get to the franchise tag deadline. Also, some other news. New York Giants Assistant Special Teams Coordinator Anthony Blevins is officially now being at, is going to be doing an interview with the Cleveland Browns for their special teams coordinator spot. This is not the first time that Blevins has got a lot of interest in potentially being a special teams coordinator with some other teams. He had interest from the Arizona Cardinals. He's come from previous organizations like the Cardinals before he eventually took the job with the New York Giants this past season. And now he's getting interest from the Browns to become their official uh, special teams coordinator. This is not surprising. Even though the special teams was not very great this year, still, he's been a very respected player. The Giants organization loves him. So I'm not surprised at all that he's getting some interest right now from other teams to potentially be the the, uh, special teams coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. We'll have to wait and see how this process plays out from now until we get until more into the offseason. But either way... The New York Giants special teams coordinator, assistant special teams coordinator, right now, Anthony Blevins is being conducted on an interview for the Cleveland Browns to be their special teams coordinator. Now I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes of why I am doing this video today. And that is more draft scouting on a couple of other players that I am interested in the New York Giants selecting with their their picks going to this NFL draft. The first one I'm going to talk about is former Pittsburgh Panthers and current USC Trojans wide receiver Jordan Addison. The 6 foot wide receiver, 6 foot 175 pounds wide receiver who is a junior coming out this year and is looking and projected to be one of, if not the top wide receiver prospect coming out in this NFL draft. And last year in 2022, he recorded 59 receptions for 875 yards and 8 touchdowns with a 14.8 yards per per reception on the season. Jordan Addison is what you call an elite route running prospect. That's the one thing that a lot of people relate when it comes to Jordan Addison is his dynamic play in the middle of the field, his 
being very aggressive in ball and getting to the ball, his explosive extra step after he has after the coverage is on him, he has that explosive extra step in the middle of the football field to be able to break open from defenders. And the fact that he's such a well-defined route runner in the middle of the field really, really accentuates his overall value when it comes to the wide receiver position. That's the one thing that I really, really like about this kid is he is so explosive in the middle of the field. He's a very good to great route runner, the best route runner coming out of this draft class this year. And some of the reasons why to buy in to Jordan Addison and why he'd be such a terrific addition for the New York Giants if he somehow falls to around the 25 range when the Giants pick. Separation comes consistently at all levels. Route running. This guy knows when the coverage is on him, double teams or, or single teams, he knows how to create that extra separation because of his ability to run crisp and precise routes over the middle of the field, whether he's in the, whether he's in the slot position or whether he's put on the outside. This guy knows how to run those precise routes over the middle of the field as well as being able to get open and get that extra little separation because of his ability to create this separation due to his route running. He's also crafty release he's also crafty in his release packages and works at the top of his routes. Once again, route running. He knows how to get off the the when he knows how to get off the coverage in the middle of the field. He knows how to get that extra little burst because of his little quick agilities and quick footsteps, quick movement in and out of his routes to create that little bit of separation in the middle of the field and towards the outside, where he can get that little bit of extra twitch in his step to be able to unlock from the coverage in the middle of the field like any slot receiver or outside receiver can do. He's also a proven weapon as a high-volume target. Pretty much when the, the team, when USC needed this guy to go out there and catch a whole bunch of targets in the middle of the field, or when they needed him to be that consistent threat over the middle of the field and get peppered with a whole bunch of targets, he was that reliable guy that was able to get open enough to be able to make those contested catches and be able to make those catches on a consistent basis over the middle of the field and be able to catch them in volumes for their quarterback, Caleb Williams, in the 2022 NFL season, uh, college football season. Also, one other reason why, he's a terrific in spatial awareness and body control. He knows how to use his body to be able to get open and be able to create, get some of those big contested catches and put his body into the right position. He knows how to track the ball in open space and in the open field, when the ball is up in the air, he knows where to be to be able to go up there and get the ball in open space. That's a very interesting and terrific trait to have if you're a wide receiver going into the NFL. And he doesn't have elite speed. He doesn't have elite size in terms of his height and his weight. He is 175 pounds and six foot, but it's decent size for a wide receiver coming to the league. And you don't have to be six foot three, six foot four, 220 pounds in order to be an elite wide receiver in this league. If you're a very good route runner, you can get open in open spaces to be able to make the catches inconsistent and contested catches overall. It's going forward. <laughs> now, some of the reasons why he has some concerns going into this NFL season. He doesn't have the true top shelf speed to create the explosiveness after the catch. He's not a yak guy. He's pretty much a guy that when you get him to the ball, he's not going to be able to create a whole bunch of yak after the catch. That's not his game. Maybe you could do it occasionally, but you're not going to see him go out there consistently creating that yak after the catch. That's one of the things that you're going to have to see going forward is if he can maybe develop that type of game when he gets into the NFL. And physicality could be a barrier to a full complementary skill set. Obviously, they're going by his measurables right now. The fact he's only six foot, 175 pounds, they think that he's not going to be able to create space and get open. Well, I have a guy that is similar build to him, and that's Devontae Smith over there with the Philadelphia Eagles. Similar build, six foot, six foot one wide receiver, 175 pounds soaking wet. 
but he's able to go out there and create that separation because he's such a terrific route runner, high pointing the ball, is able to get that extra little quickness and burst out of step going into his routes in and out. And drops were a significant issue at Pittsburgh. Key word, Pittsburgh. Obviously, he was able to correct that issue a little bit when he got to USC. But another wide receiver, like I made in my video yesterday about Rasheed Rice, he has had drop issues in the past. Hopefully, he's not going to be able to accentuate that when he gets into the NFL. And he's going to be able to find a way to correct that issue is when the ball is in the air, he's going to be able to use his body and catch the ball with his body as well as catch the ball with his hands. Drops can be a big thing with this kid. But either way, I think that Jordan Addison is a terrific wide receiver prospect coming out in the NFL. And I really believe that this kid can be a major factor going into the NFL. Now, my other prospect that I was, I'm, I'm scouting right now, Osiris Torrance, the inside inside offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman, 6'5", 347-pound lineman, junior, out of Florida. This kid is one of the highest prospects coming out of college football in terms of the interior offensive line. And we know the Giants could use some help on the interior offensive line. I know that the Giants are very high on both Joshua Zudu and Marcus McKeithen out of North Carolina last year. I know that. But both of them one of them didn't even play at all last year. The other one played sparingly last year and went out with the season. McKeithen's coming off a torn ACL. Azuda's coming off a neck injury. And both these guys didn't really show a whole lot in terms of tape in their rookie year. Now, I know that both these guys deserve an opportunity in 2023, and they will. But it does not hurt to bring in more competition on the interior offensive line, and it does and you can never have enough offensive linemen on your team. Good offensive linemen on your team in case you're dealing with injuries. And this kid is huge. 347 pounds, 6 foot 5. You could slide him in at that left guard position for the New York Giants if he's there. He's excellent against the run game. He is very good on his first he's very good on his first step. In pass protection, he also does a good job in stopping defenders in their pass rush. And Torrance does a good job of handling the bull rush overall and shows to have the lower body strength to anchor down on defenders, stopping them from getting any pen penetration into the pocket. Now some of the reasons why to buy into this kid. His run game dominance. And what do the Giants have? If they can find a way to bring back Saquon Barkley, what did the Giants do very well last year? They were top four in the NFL in terms of their run game. That has a lot to do with the offensive line. You add this 6'5", 347-pound monster in the interior of that offensive line, it's only going to make this offensive line better. Another reason, he's physicality at the point of attack. This kid is not afraid to hit when he gets into the offensive line and gets into the offensive line when it comes to the run game and the pass protection. He is not afraid to create the contact, and I love that about an offensive lineman. He is not afraid to go over there and bully people on that offensive line. It gets me excited just to think about that. And also, he's an anchor in pass protection. What is one of the one things we lacked in the interior offensive line? An anchor in pass protection. Andrew Thomas was the only guy you could consistently count on in that offensive line 2022 to consistently pass block on a basis. This kid right here, the fact he's such good, he's really good and anchors the offensive line could be a big time benefit for this team. Now, one of the reasons why it's a cause for concern selecting him is scheme specific. He's a guy that maybe is better in the certain types of scheme that he's put into going forward. The Giants like running a, a run scheme most of the time in 2022. I know the team wants to pass the football a lot more, but it's going to be very interesting on how this kid is going to adjust and the type of scheme he's going to be able to get into when he goes into the NFL in 2023. He's questionable when it comes to his lateral agility, which means he's a little bit antsy with his footwork. He sometimes can get beaten off the edge, sometimes with some quickness from the interior defensive lineman. 
He needs to find a way to adjust to that and do a better job in his first steps and be able to adjust for the quickness of the defensive linemen because defensive linemen are not only bigger in the NFL, they're quicker in the NFL. So he needs to do a better job in terms of his lateral movement from left to right to be able to get a better first step and adjust to the quickness of these defensive linemen, especially in the interior. And he has limited range in his blo as a blocker and his pass protection, pretty much indicating it looks like he doesn't have the short, ar he doesn't have the long arms to be able to handle some of these larger offensive li defensive linemen in the NFL. <laughs> That's a tricky thing because at the same time, we've heard this before about arm length, short hands, all that kind of stuff. It could come up, it could come into play some way when we get into the NFL with this kid. But either way, he has the measurables to be a very dominant offensive lineman in the interior. And that's the one thing the Giants have lacked at all three spots in the interior is a dominant interior offensive lineman that we could count on going into 2023. So, that's just a couple of my guys that I'm scouting for you for the New York Giants going into this 2023 NFL Draft. What do you guys think about Jordan Addison, the wide receiver out of USC, and Osiris Torrance, the offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman out of Florida? Jordan Addison, six foot, 175 pound wide receiver. Osiris Torrance, six foot five, 347 pound offensive lineman. As well as the news about New York Giants assistant special teams coordinator Anthony Blevins getting an interview with the Cleveland Browns to become their special teams coordinator, as well as the franchise tag date starting today and the two week window on for the New York Giants to try to work out long term deals with J Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley before they have to eventually place the franchise tag on one of these players going into the 2023 offseason. You guys let me know in the comment section what you think about all the news about the franchise tag date starting today. Anthony Blevins, assistant special teams coordinator, getting an interview with the Cleveland Browns for their special teams coordinator spot. And your opinions on Jordan Addison and Osiris Torrance going into this NFL draft period and what you think about your scouting and what you like and dislike about both these players heading into the NFL draft that will begin on April 27th, 2023. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Take it easy. And as always, let's go New York football giants together. Blue everyone.